Uh, with recent legislation passed in Illinois, uh, owners uh, can now take advantage of new delivery models such as design build, uh, public-private partnerships, or, or P3, uh, CMGC, uh, progressive design build, and other alternative delivery modes uh, to promote collaboration, uh, innovation, and improved project outcomes. Um, our panel this morning would discuss what they're doing uh, now to utilize uh, these innovative project delivery models. Uh, I'll now introduce our panelists and ask uh, each to introduce himself, and what we'll do is we'll go left to right. Right. Uh, thank you. Jim Shaw with RSNH. I'm a vice president there. Um, I've been working in the civil engineering industry for about 27 years now. As far as alternative project delivery, about 12 years ago, I was uh, called upon to work on a job in Virginia. I was told it was a uh, 3P project or P3 project. And at that time, I thought it was pavement preservation. <laughs> True story, so I said I can handle that, so I got involved in it in the first meeting. I kind of got blown away, um, but I, I've loved that work. It was great. It was a great learning experience, and I've been working in uh, alternative project delivery ever since, along with traditional project delivery. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Neil Adams. I'm with the Office of Planning and Programming, Bureau of Innovative Project Delivery, where we look beyond the traditional way of design, bid, build, um, and... Um, I'm accompanied here with Mike Sturr. He is our bureau chief, and I'll let him introduce himself. That's a triple introduction. Uh, Jim, I, had the, I made the same triple P error back earlier in my career. thought it was a pavement project, but uh, got in over my head on that one. Uh, so Mike Stark, Bureau Chief for Innovative Project Delivery, new-ish new bureau at, uh, at IDOT to take on this new challenge to us for alternate project delivery. So looking forward to talking with everybody. All right. Uh, I'm Russell Petroviak. I work at the MPO for this region, CMAP, Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, and I'm in the capital program development. We look at all kinds of ways from mainly traditional to any kind of way for bundling to any way we can get a project basically built uh, and get it through the NEPA process. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Mike Wicks. I'm a uh, deputy chief in the engineering department uh, for the Tollway, the Illinois Tollway. Uh, I have uh, 42 years of experience as a civil engineer, but probably less than a year in design build or all the alternative project delivery methods we are currently being uh, allowed to perform here in Illinois. So uh, we're very excited at the Tollway to start this process, and uh, as you'll hear in our discussions today. Thank you. All right. So I want to thank the, the panelists for their participation here this morning. So let's just uh, get right into the discussion. So first question. Um, so it's well known that uh, Illinois is, is one of the last states uh, to adopt innovative project delivery methods. Uh, what is industries, and let's just kind of focus both on owner and private sector, uh, what's the uh, uh, industry's biggest fear in rolling out an innovative project delivery program, and how does each agency plan to address this? Well, I guess I could start with, I think one of the big fears is, is uh, the kids call it today, it's FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. Um, you know, and, and there's, some, there's some real fear in that, and it's founded in, uh, mostly in design build, right? Because um, the perception is that a lot of big firms dominate that market, and there's a lot of mid-sized firms or DVE firms or smaller firms that are trying to figure out how do they get into it. And, you know, there's, there's a real issue there. Now, there are other opportunities within the programs that are being developed by both the TOEA and CMAP and IDOT. Uh, with regards to standard engineering practices and getting involved in many different ways in outreach programs. I'll let them speak to what they're doing about it, but I think that's probably the number one issue right now. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, for IDOT, um, uh, as well as the tollway, we, we, we obtained uh, recent legislation that allows for uh, alternative delivery. Um, those delivery methods include CMGC, design build, and progressive design build. Um, that's in addition to our already existing uh, P3 legislation that's been in place since 2011. Uh, so we had, now have the whole gamut of alternative delivery methods beyond the traditional way. Um, we're not looking to replace our traditional way. It's a, it's a very good program, um, but these are uh, other uh, options that we could utilize in the toolbox uh, for the DOT as well as uh, not only the tollway and 
Um, there's also legislation uh, here and there that's being proposed about uh, other localities that are obtaining these delivery methods as well. Um, you know, when I, when I first got that we have the privilege of having a heads up on what the questions are going to be, or at least generally what they're going to be. But when I glanced at this question, the first thing that came to mind, it was I equated it to worrying about what you're going to get for Christmas. Christmas is a good thing, and good things come uh, in small packages and big packages sometimes. Uh, but it, it's wonderful that it's here. I mean, the biggest fear is, is the same as, as any complex project or projects. Um, it, it's, it's being organized and prepared enough to deliver it. We have a, a tremendous backlog of experience to, to build on from the other states that have uh, led the way ahead of us. But uh, I am looking forward to opening that first Christmas present in a couple months. Um, and the, the planning side, on the project implementation side, we probably have a little bit different um, appreciation for what we would call innovative project delivery. Most of these have been around my entire career. I've been doing this for 20 years. Uh, I haven't seen much that we haven't tried or attempted to do before. What we, what we sometimes run into challenges, though, is more on things such as right away. Uh, the early phases of development. So we've tried to, at CMAP, uh, do a bunch of PELs, for, especially for grade crossing, grade separations. Um, some successful, some not. We tried to w expedite uh, going from phase one to phase two through things like section 1440 and some other you know, stuff on the technical side. So on our focus, and in talking to people who implement projects in our area, uh, maybe not as much eyed on the large projects because those are kind of unique, but we're looking at the holistic. You know, we have 2,000 projects in our tip. How do we get processes that work for not just the big projects, but for the pavement project that you guys started with uh, and, and everything in between? Um, that That's kind of one of our focuses, and that's where some of the impediments whether it's the QBS process, whether it's uh, some of the other things uh, that we're trying to, to navigate through are, are kind of challenges. So what we're trying to do is work with existing processes and find out, are there ways to create more efficiencies? Where are the current roadblocks? Uh, what are things, you know, sometimes to be honest, it's quite, a lot of it's just staffing. Or uh, in our experience, if you're going through the right, right away process, you can just add two years to your project every time. Um, so it's also scheduling and knowing things, how the process is going to be played out, and then planning accordingly um, based on that information. You know, I don't know if just because I, I'm sitting here at the end, you know, <laughs> that uh, and I work closely. The tollway is working very closely with IDOT in developing our uh, our alternative delivery program. So, it, so you may hear a lot of ditto from me today. But uh, one thing I do want to point out, you know, we do have uh, very capable uh, consultant designers uh, here in Illinois, uh, too, who design our projects and uh, perform construction inspection. We have very capable contractors who build our facilities. And so uh, that part doesn't scare me as much. And really, fear isn't the issue. It's it's more of just anticipation. Uh, but we we are going to have a challenge at the at the tollway because we do design, bid, build our traditional way since we've been at the tollway. And so this is a new process. It does have some differences during the procurement phase. So uh, so that will be a challenge at the tollway. I'm sure at IDOT as well. But uh, something we're all excited and uh, we have uh, we're ready to go. So Neil, you had mentioned that uh, you know current Illinois General uh, Assembly legislation was passed in, in 2022, and that really paved the way uh, for innovative project delivery. So uh, new delivery methods such as design build, progressive design build. Uh, you mentioned the P3 had already been passed, but then also CMGC. You know those are the various tools in the toolkit that are available uh, for use on infrastructure projects. So really the question is gonna be, um, how will each of the agencies select which delivery method is most appropriate and what project parameters will you assess in the selection process? Yeah, and, and, and you, you have to look very closely and make sure it's a good fit, um, whichever um, delivery method you're selecting. It's gotta be the right project, um, you know, uh, you know, for example, um, I've 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 been dealing with the P3 realm for the past few years, but with these other de 
delivery methods. You have to do your due diligence as an agency, uh, qualitatively, quantitatively, looking at uh, the funding options, uh, if there's financing involved with that. Um, so you really have to do your background information to make sure that you're selecting the right delivery method. Um, because if it's not the right delivery method, it's not going to work out well. Um, so um, that's that's it, it. It 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 it's a lot of work up front uh, on the planning and the programming side. I will say that. And um, yeah, I don't know if anybody else has anything to add. Maybe just add to that. Yeah, it, it's a we're a bureaucracy, so it's a, there's a process assigned to it. So we've been. Uh, uh, We've been working diligently over the past several months to to build that process, to build it into uh, how we do work on a day-to-day -day business through development of manuals and guidelines, and then implementation of administrative rules. So that'll all be uh, uh, you know clearly laid out to the folks who want to participate in the process. But it is a two-step process where it's first identified in our multi-year pro program. We work very closely with the districts to establish those lists and then uh, the projects are identified as a potential of having of being able to go to innovative project delivery uh, and then the second step of it is vetting exactly what delivery method is appropriate uh, and we have a responsibility as written in the in the law that we have to report back to the general assembly on an annual basis that those steps are being diligently taken and we're spending the money in the best interest of the people of illinois um, so it's documented. It's it, it's a useful tool, as as Neil said. It's it, it's a uh, it's a bit of work to get it all sorted out. Jim can attest to that. Who's our our chief consultant on pulling together the program, uh, but it's a worthwhile and uh, educational process in pulling it together. How about CMAP? Any thoughts on that? Yeah. So well, at CMAP we received a grant from the Build America Bureau, and one of the things that we're doing with that grant is trying to develop. Like I said, we're we're looking at things from the local level all the way up through the tollway and, and IDOT um, checklist or some sort of um, flow chart or something like that so that folks can look at their project, put it through some sort of template that we've developed and maybe find the appropriate alternative delivery method that works for them. It's not going to work for everybody and we're trying to make sure that we're realistic, that when there's an opportunity for a project to do whether it's progressive design build or some other way that they know that this is a project that's good for that, but that they also know that when a project is not good, because if you go down the wrong path, it actually can make things worse. So we want to really try to help people navigate when an alternative delivery uh, method is, is appropriate and when it's not so that the times when it's used, we have successes and we can then build off of that. And you can then make the case to use it more when you have successful examples of how it's been used. No, and at the, at the toy, we have a little different uh, process because of, it's 20% of our annual budget can be uh, alternative delivery. And, uh, and so right now we're pursuing design build as a pilot uh, to get to get uh, to get started. And eventually we will have a process very similar to IDOT as far as how to select projects. Uh, uh, so again, 80% of our, our uh, programs will be more or less how we do things today. But we uh, we do want to uh, uh, be able to uh, to look at the projects that that offer the chance for innovation. Uh, we can associate how because it's all it's also based on level of risk that we're able to that we want to maintain or we want to uh, pass off to the uh, contractor designer. So it's uh, we are having in the, so eventually down the road when we have all three developed, we will have a process in place uh, that will evaluate that ahead of selection. All right, so let's uh, let's next talk about uh, procurement and, and the process to procure these types of innovative projects. Um, contractors and consultants look for a fair and confidential process while also minimizing pursuit costs. So please discuss your views on the procurement selection process of these types of innovative project delivery projects, um, and specifically, um, you know, how will your agency address things like one step versus two step? Uh, the shortlisting, um, ATCs or alternative technical concepts, one-on-one -on -one meetings, things like that. Jim's a consultant, so he has the biggest, uh, the most, uh, <laughs> the most skin in the game here. Jim, why don't, you, why don't you take a shot at that one? And uh, 
I'll agree with you at the end, hopefully. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. Um, so there's a lot to unpack there, right? And I think uh, what I'm what I'm not going to do is answer from the agency or owner perspective with regards to how some of these things are going to be procured. But um, I'm going to I'm going to be a consultant right now and, and talk about how consultants can get ready for these type of projects. And um, I don't think well, I'll just say I don't think we're going to see anything out of the ordinary with regards to procurement. Um, but as a consultant, I, I would caution other consultants to make sure this is something you're interested in and want to do. Uh, make a good sound business decision before getting into this. It does take your A team. You know, you mentioned stipends and ATCs. It does take an investment, particularly on the design build side, with regards to um, getting into this. Sometimes you're you're making that investment and not winning the project. Sometimes you'll make, you win the project and do very well. Um, you know, again, with regards to a consultant perspective, we do like to see a two step process in these. Uh, for progressive CMGC and uh, um, and design build, uh, with the qualifications based selection being very important to us, um, and then obviously in, in the design build realm, you're going to get into a more competitive process, right? You're going to compete with other teams, which can be a lot of fun. But again, um, you know there is there is cost required, and and as a consultant, you will have to put forth some of your own money to do that. Um, I'll let the other gentleman talk about stipends a little bit, but we do look for a, a reasonable stipend program. We look for something that is uh, respective of the effort that goes into it. So we understand that when a project is not too complex, first of all, it might not be a good candidate for alternative project delivery, but the stipends might be lower. But if there's a large effort and a large amount of innovation that is required, uh, we'd look for that stipend to be higher. Alternative technical concepts, I'm trying to hit all these. That was a heck of a question. Um, you know, they're, they're great. They're part of the process. Again, this is more design build focus. Um, Probably the most fun part from the consulting engineering perspective, but there's also a lot of uh, again a lot of costs that could put into that. So that's where that stipend and and again being making good sound business decisions with regards to how many ATCs you're going to put forth, and then and then having a good process in place, which I believe we've discussed with both the Toway and IDOT with regards to uh, limiting the number of ATCs and and how we could get feedback on them and how they're scored so that. Um, you know, consulting or design build teams aren't just out there generating dozens and dozens of, of potential changes that just won't go anywhere. So I said a lot. Please. Well done, Jim. Um, I, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the single procurement. Um, the, the way the law is written, it ha the, the, the total project cost has to be under $5 million for one. Uh, it also has to get uh, either secretary or the tollways executive director sign off, um, but that's the differentiation. Otherwise, as Jim mentioned, it's going to be a two-step process, uh, RFQ and RFP process uh, for selection. Yeah, um, yeah, Jim, I agree with you, by the way. You're off the hook. Well done. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's meant to be a competitive uh, Project. We're going to look to the industry to, to be uh, to be competitive, to be creative. We're, I were in the bureau of innovative project alive project uh, delivery. It's uh, innovation is the word. You know, so we we need to procure in an innovative way that the innovation is is key to the procurement process. So all the things that Jim mentioned, uh, ATCs, one on ones, stipends. We're we're willing and happy to pay the stipend to get that innovation uh, early in the project and to, to build a, a solid base for the project that's, that's going to meet, uh, um, you know, that's going to, that's going to deliver on schedule. That's going to deliver on, on quality, all the things that, that were mentioned in the question. Uh, but innovation is the key. So, you know, set, set your, set your dials to innovation when you, when you wade into this pool and uh, you will be successful. I don't really have too much to add here other than, you know, while innovation is the key from the CMAP side of things, when we are looking at, you know, thousands of projects, it's consistency, replicable. So if something is done in one project, is that a one-off or is that something that we can take and then apply to another project? Uh, well, I think we're very interested in being able to use some of these innovative processes uh, and see how they transferable they are to other projects uh, so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time we go through what is called the innovative project. 
This is one of those ditto times, I guess. But no, I, I do want to say this is the, the ATCs, the stipends, the one on ones. These, this, these are. This is the new. That's the new stuff that we are going to be performing during the procurement phase. And so uh, we are in the in the. We are currently developing how best to handle this. They are. Well, they will be mostly project specific. Stipends amount will vary depending on the type of project that we're doing for design build. Uh, so. Uh, and and as we as we move further into this program, we'll be able to have a, a better idea just how to uh, accomplish this. But right now, we're we're working with each other to come up with some some ideas of how to pursue it. So, if I could add one thing, I think something that lost in the question when, when I reread it, um, fair and confidential. You mentioned um, those are the foundational pieces of an alternative project delivery program. Um, we need to make sure that our owners are selecting uh, the appropriate firms based upon their qualifications and their approach, and that uh, all that information, that investment that that's those teams are making into these projects is done confidentially and 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 again fairly. It's a, it's a very very foundational piece of that. So. Yeah, and just maybe one quick follow-up question as well, because Mike, um, you were talking about innovation, and I think all the panelists were discussing stipends. Maybe for you, Jim, based on your experience, what kind of range of total install costs are you seeing for stipends? So again, I think you know we've seen stipends determined a lot of different ways. Some do it as a percentage of total project cost. I think. Um, you know, a, a range, it, it really varies greatly. Um, but those stipends are out there to attract um, those teams to the game, right? And they're also meant to help compensate them. I, I think the, the best process we've seen is one that considers, you know, we're on a lower value or lower total dollar amount. Uh, let's call it a design build project because that's where you use stipends. So if it's a $100 million project, we don't want to see, you know, 2% of that or a half a percent or percent, it needs to be a little higher. Whereas when the project value gets higher, it becomes a lower percentage. So there really is a sliding scale. It's almost like a, you know, a flow chart that you have to use to get there, but uh, it's not intended to compensate the team entirely, but really it's, uh, I think Mike, innovation, it's meant to incentivize innovation. And then when the stipend is paid out to those teams who are not successful, that the owners get to own and, and then utilize that intellectual property that's been developed. So, um, as a consultant, the general answer is it's never enough. But I think uh, if we could all just arrive at a fair amount that, uh, you know, you want to have teams that are competing and getting skin in the game, but not, uh, we don't want anyone to get hurt. So as a fellow consultant, great answer. I appreciate that. Okay. So uh, next on the topic of, of risk management, uh, innovative project delivery provides the opportunity to evaluate and distribute project risks differently. Notably in the CMGC and progressive design build world, Owners get a peek behind the curtain and see how design build teams identify and allocate risks. How do you plan to distribute risks between owner and design build team? And any specifics that come to mind where you want to own the risk? And conversely, can you think of where you plan for the contractor to own the risk? Maybe we'll start with the, obviously the owner, Sunil, if you want to take that one. Um, I don't know if you want to go. Uh, and explain the differences between CMGC and the other two delivery methods first? Sure, I could touch on that real quick. So um, I, I'll just run across the spectrum. CMGC, for those of you who are transportation engineers, I'll, I'll, and it's my perspective, so that's how I'm going to explain it. CMGC is very similar to the current process. The owner will select an engineer through qualifications-based selection and then select a contractor um, to come and provide early input, some pre-construction phase services. And then you will uh, iterate the scope and fee of the project and come up with a guaranteed maximum price. Sometimes it's lump sum. So there's like a negotiation. There's like an iteration of potential solutions and costs that are associated with it. And then if you could come to an agreement, you'll execute a contract and go construct it. If not, uh, you'll, you can go through that process again or kind of boot it out and go through traditional design bid build. Progressive design build is very similar to that. I, I don't want to get on all the details and nuances between the different methodologies, but uh, that's where you'll have a team where um, it's not a forced marriage because CMGC is kind of a forced marriage, right, between the contractor and engineer. It's one where they'll come in as a team and compete, and you'll select a progressive design builder. You go through that same iterative process, so the owner gets to maintain a little bit of control, um, transfer the appropriate amount of risk, and as you, know, as you go through those discussions, you daylight the risk, you put a cost to it, and then determine, I'll call it risk optimization. You determine who is best equipped to handle the risk, and then that's where the risk is a, a, a put. Um, design build is, is really a different animal. 
Um, it's intended to shift more risk to the design build team or the contractor generally um, from the owner, but there's always a cost associated with that. And then the owner is giving up more control, which I think we're going to talk about as well. So I hope that helps. Um, but again, I think I'll, I'll try and answer this question a little bit. Risk optimization is, is the term we use. Um, it's hard to put a, a generic answer to that with regards to what you would look to transfer. Contractors are very, very good at handling risk and, and appropriately costing it. You know, we look at even in the design bid build world, um, the price of commodities, especially recently, we've all felt that. Um, if you go buy a dozen eggs and see how you feel about that. Um, to price something, say if a construction contract is going to last two or three years, um, you know, to price out steel or concrete or, or stuff like that over a three-year period, that's a huge risk they're taking on. So they are very good at it. Um, so again, it's just really who is best equipped to handle the particular risk as you're going through a project. And then that's where it really should be um, put. All good. Any other thoughts from the owners? Neil, you, you had something teed up there for, Jim was supposed to be given the run rules. I think he answered the whole question for us though. There's gonna be a scope, there's gonna be a change order involved there. Um, I guess my thoughts on it just, you know, risk is risk is money, right? To manage risk is money. So the, the main thing is we'll go through an exercise early in the project to assign those risks. And we'll have the open discussion of who's gonna own what. Uh, and that'll be documented in development of the contract. So, you know, the, the innovation and the the biggest benefit of this this delivery process is this is a closer contractual. There's a, there's more mutual interest in completing a successful project in this delivery. Um, there really is, and um, I, I think managing risk is key to it. Uh, the the methods that Jim explained, design bid build is is uh, if there's a meter between design bid build and uh, design build as the most risk. It's not risky. There's just more risks that have to be managed. Perhaps it's more risky as well. Um, you know, so there's a meter that just has to be monitored there, and it has to be priced appropriately. From the department's point of view, a few of the things that will we will continue to own through the process is right away acquisition, and uh, probably a bulk of the phase one type activity through a consultant. We don't want to throw those things in, onto the pile right away uh, because they can have a big impact on, on schedule, which uh, schedule equals money as well. So for the time being, we'll probably manage the bulk of those and then lean heavily on the technical delivery and constructability delivery for the projects. And Neil, did, did we answer your, your you're in the sandwich here, the answer sandwich? We yeah. Dad, in the middle there? No, I think you both put it. Well done. Um, yeah, it's 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 very much a, a negotiated um, uh, scenario where you're sitting down and talking about each one of the risks. There could be hundreds of risks involved with a project, and you're going through each one of those and um, negotiating. Uh, as Jim mentioned, uh, who's in who's in the best position to take on what. Uh, sometimes some of those risks, owners well suited to take care of that and can respond pretty quickly. Um, but um, you know, I think I think that, and uh, tell me if you agree. Um, you know, over the years, I think there's been a, quite a switch uh, from you know when uh, design build projects, even P3 projects, uh, have been done over the years. Uh, there's been more talk about and discussion with private sector about, um, you know, owners can't be pushing on every single risk to the private sector. It's not a good situation. Um, and I don't know if you want to expand on that, but um, it, we're at a, a pivotal point pivotal time of um, sitting down with the private sector and discussing which risks are, uh, you know, who's in the best position to take on what risks, right? CMAP or anyone? Tollway, any uh, thoughts? I think they've risk? covered it. Okay. Well, I, I just want to add it to Tollway, we are schedule driven. We, we like to get our improvements uh, done and completed safely and with quality. And uh, and so that is one of the things we're looking at with these alternative delivery methods is this is a, a means that we can, we can get our improvements done even faster, which means we need to understand the risks that are associated with, with these, uh, these improvements and, uh, and assess them accordingly who best to solve them. So there are some, like, like Mike said, I mean, right away we'll most likely say with the tollway. 
probably some of the utility uh, coordinations, other third parties, but still, again, it's project specific and uh, what we feel that is best handled by the uh, design builder and contractor would, will uh, assess that way. So in my experience, one of the biggest concerns that owners have when delivering a project through innovative project delivery is a loss of control and decision-making authority during design development and ultimately in construction. What steps are you taking to address this and specifically ensuring that quality management is built into every step of the process? And I know, Jim, you and I were kind of talking about this before. You want to take a first crack at Okay. If you put a microphone in front of me, I'm going to use it, Mike. So I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that, I mean, I don't, you know, when you look at alternative project delivery, you know, the quality uh, management is still, is still on the contractor or on the consultant. It's, it's extremely important. Matter of fact, it becomes more paramount. Um, but I would think that the owners would like to see quality uh, plans that are developed with and included in proposals with regards to exactly how that's going to be managed, exactly who's going to do what. I don't think from, I, I think you're going to see a lot of the processes that are currently in place from the owners, and they could back me up on this one, stay in place with regards to field work and, and ensuring that the, the quality product is developed and it's built to safe standards. So I'm going to let you guys build upon that, if that's all right. Loss of control. Um, you know, control control is, is something you want, and sometimes it's something you don't want. That's how I, I kind of look at this thing. This I think of many times that at, at the simplest level, it's like, geez, I wish somebody else had to worry about this. So... Um, uh, you know, you, as an owner, we'll, we're happy to pay somebody to worry about something is, is kind of how I, I look at this thing. The consultants are there to work with us and uh, and support us through our needs, and we're more than willing to transfer that risk uh, as appropriate. So, you know, you got to be mindful of what you want to remain in control of, what you still want to own. Certainly, uh, you know, our, our commitment and obligations to the to the public are paramount, so we'll be we'll – be, looking at control of issues in that respect mostly most uh, closely but you know once again innovation is is the key here it's it's the keystone of the whole thing and we want to allow folks the smart people who uh, the creative people um, to go innovate and therefore we have to relinquish control over some decision making. We have a long history of technical uh, specifications and project delivery and all that type of stuff, which is great to have. Uh, and we will continue to lean on those things. Uh, and But we will be mindful that it, they will have to be deviations. And there's always deviations, right? I think deviations from standard is a standard document. So um, we, we are here to innovate and, and work through that. Yeah, I, I would say that it's a sliding scale. So early in the project development, you want full control or, or close to it. You want the end product to be what you started with. Um, so there's a lot that goes into, when we talk about quality, that, that, that can be defined in different ways. So there's quality of the construction, there's quality of the workmanship. But in the early phases, quality means something different when you're engaging the public. It means something different when you're talking about economic development or some of the ancillary things that the project benefits might have. So, you know, is it contributing or reducing congestion? Is it touching safety issues? So all of those other things go into the quality of the project at the front end. And then on the back end, I think that many of the agencies are more than happy to relinquish more control to the people who can build something uh, on a set on a, a desirable schedule, um, but also that there's accountability. So if something goes awry, you know, sometimes you you open the ground up and you find that there was a, an old gas uh, station that left their tanks there. What are you going to do now, or or some other mitigation thing? So then what happens? You know, so uh, as long as there's an accountability and there's kind of defined roles on, you know, the risk allocation. I think that from our perspective. Beginning is where we have a lot of say in it, and towards the design and the build, it's sliding more and more towards the, the consultant side and the, the actual builder and less the owner. No, I see the biggest cha uh, challenge for us with uh, control loss will be during the design. Uh, as Mike said, IDOT, it's not, the tollway also has standards, and we have uh, milestone reviews of, of plans as uh, prior to being uh, released for bid. So this will be... Uh, 
this will be a challenge for us, but that's where this innovation, we are, we are uh, trading uh, uh, control for innovation. And so we, we want to uh, see innovation and uh, encourage it. And so that's what we're going to have to learn. And hopefully that's what we'll uh, see as we pursue forward. Okay, next question. I've, uh, I've heard in other Midwest states where uh, the DBE, uh, MBE, WB community feels that innovative project delivery is, uh, is really only for the big national uh, contractors and, and design firms. So how are your agencies addressing uh, DBE involvement and what types of, of outreach or training programs do you plan to implement to ensure meaningful DBE, MBE, WBE involvement on these types of projects? I'll go first. I guess um, uh, DBE programs are hugely important to the state. Uh, um, I think Illinois has been at the forefront of of this issue for a long time, and we continue to make strides in it. So uh, outreach is a big part of it. Uh, just even in the development of the rollout of the program, we've we've been um, very diligent on making sure we're having outreach and discussions with various agencies um, where that is their concern. So I'm happy there. Um, you know, we continue to have, we have, uh, training is going to be a big part of this. So let me just put it that way. Training is a key element in our project rollout. So identifying folks both internally and uh, in the industry that will have to be trained and brought up to speed on the new business practices uh, will be important there. I, I, I don't believe that um, it is set aside for the, for the big ones. I think it's a tremendous opportunity in the way we have it set up. There's certainly going to be a design builder or a progressive design builder or a CMGC entity that is its own unique contract. Those can be made up of uh, joint ventures, uh, you know, teaming agreements or, or sole proprietors. There are uh, requirements within each one of those contracts to meet both on the design side and on the construction side. We'll have to meet the same standards within those contracts now. Uh, and there's an opportunity for the DBA, DBE community to get involved uh, in those as well. But I think in, initially there's there's several support contracts around those design build, progressive design build or CMGC contracts that involve independent cost estimator, which is a new role. Uh, it, it involves construction administration, construction obser ob observation, however we want to say a construction administration, which would be very, very close to our traditional uh, means and methods of, of delivering that the, with variations in the method of payment, of course, because we'll be dealing with lump sum uh, and or guaranteed maximum price delivery, but there'll still be the great diligent work of measuring, um, determining compliance with plans, lines, grades, specifications, and all of that type of stuff. And then lastly, there's an owner's, there's an owner's rep or an engineer of record, depending on, on the delivery. So um, those opportunities will still have the same, uh, they're basically the same program we have now in the DB community is delivered that they can be competitive, creative um, in those environments. So uh, I feel that we have it covered initially. Uh, there's always room for improvement. And of course we acknowledge that things are always uh, adjusted to as, as they develop. But um, I've been encouraged by how the opportunities have presented themselves. I just like to add at the toy we uh, we agree and we have a very robust DBE and veteran owned small business uh, requirements for our both design and construction and uh, uh, we currently are seeing some pretty good efforts with our with our design bid build contracts we plan on carrying most of that over and what most probably all of it over to the uh, alternative delivery systems so uh, we uh, anticipate a lot of opportunities for for those in uh, disadvantaged businesses as well as the veteran owned. And, and we've uh, internally have been working with our Office of Business and Workforce Diversity. Um, you know, they, they um, look at all the law, the Fed law, as well as the state laws with regard to DB involvement. And um, we work very closely with them and how, how this would get rolled out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so recognizing that innovative project delivery is new to the Illinois market, what types of uh, industry outreach are you making to seek input and create awareness and support? And then, Mike, you were kind of touching on this a little bit, but um, what type of trainings internally at the agency level are you having with your staff? Because this is, you know, obviously new delivery just to help in terms of, uh, you know, creating success internally and in delivering these types of projects. 
Yeah, let me. I can start with that. Yeah. So for as far as outreach, we've uh, we've been on an internal listening tour. We we've, we've called it. Uh, Jim and I joke about. Uh, I'm a. I used to be a musician. I guess you're never not a musician. But I was. I played in various bands over there. So we sort of jokingly been called us the World Tour. Uh, we haven't made the T-shirts yet, but we've certainly. Um, and I don't think we're going to be able to sell them either. But. Uh, but we've been out there, so we've been going. We've gone. Uh, we put it on the road. We have been gone to each of the districts or combined districts in a couple of cases. I've rediscovered how big of a state Illinois is when you when you look at uh, from north to south and traveling it in the springtime. You realize it's snowing in the north and the wisteria is out in the south. So uh, it's a big state and there's a lot of territory to cover. We have uh, diligently and proudly, meaningfully reached out to the folks internally. We wrapped we wrapped up that leg. Of, of the effort. Uh, I think actually we have one more. We have one more left to a specific, I think we, uh, maybe we scheduled a follow up, I'll call it a follow up with our construction group because it's important that we really dial in on the nuances of how this this will affect them. Uh, the second leg of this thing is an external outreach. So the documents are out right now to industry, primarily through uh, Illinois Road Builders and ACEC. And we've had a, um, a couple dozen out, other specific outreaches to, for f the folks that may have fallen in between the cracks on those two agencies. I think comments are due back on that on June 23rd, if I recall. Um, and so, it's been great discussions on this, on this through this outreach. You know, so it's we've been meeting with, with groups of ten or twelve people at a time. We're expecting great uh, input from from the industry as well. We've had the great benefit of we work closely with the tollway. We meet once a month with the tollway for routine coordination on issues like this. Uh, Mike, I, I owe you. A, a beer and a steak at the end of this whole thing because I say you've been cutting line through the jungle for us on this one on a couple ones getting initial feedback and making it a little bit easier for us following in your wake on the feedback curve so uh, I'm really proud of the, the outreach and the feedback that will continue the second half of what you're talking about was uh, was training we've been doing training for a, a long time in uh, in the department uh, we haven't developed that program yet um, but I think we're learning what that program needs to be as a result of this outreach and kind of determine what the hot buttons are, what people are interested in, what needs clarity. So we'll have a both an internal and external, uh, probably a web-based uh, type outreach program, uh, perhaps perhaps an in-person session or something like that. But to be determined, and that'll be happening in uh, you know early fall, I would say, this year. Okay. How about uh, CMAP or the tollway? Yeah. So um, we, we work not just with the department, but CMAP has a, a lot more partners, per se, that we interact with regularly. So we are in constant communication and discussions with the county engineers in Northeast Illinois, uh, with folks at CDOT, with, with transit agencies, with um, whomever. So there's a, a little bit of a broader reach. Industry capacity is a concern that they've raised. Um, not just the ability to deliver uh, innovative project delivery, but just um, to your previous question a little bit of, you know, who can do this? How many people can participate? How do we build in this as not just kind of a, a unique niche kind of thing, but a, a standard industry wide within our area? So I think that, um, and, and Mike knows this, we, Phoebe, who I work with, um, we're very interested in partnering with whomever to provide industry trainings. Um, to whether it's just opening up our facilities or you know hosting or bringing consultants on, we're very interested in making sure that different whoever is interested in innovative project delivery has that opportunity. Whether it's IDOT, whether it's DuPage County, whether it's a local municipality, whether it's a transit agency. So we want to bring that those opportunities uh, in, in, in then dis distribute them really to a wider audience than perhaps IDOT would be able to do because they have a lot of internal staff that they have to work with too. Uh, we don't have that, we're not designing stuff ourselves, but we can bring in and we can be a really good place to bring in meaningful collaboration and training opportunities. So that's what we kind of are, are trying to focus on. I don't know if we're out of time because of the red zero up here, but just very quickly, uh, the tollway has released their, uh, their uh, template contracting design build documents this for our design build process and we, uh, develop these th through working with our various departments at the tollway. There's up to uh, the engineering plus about nine separate departments that had uh, had input on uh, developing these documents along with help from our general engineering consultant 
who uh, WSP, who's doing, uh, who has a nationwide experience with uh, alternative deliveries. So they put them together and they also offer training uh, to our various departments as we were proceeding to getting these documents together. Uh, they have been released. We've met with road builders and ACEC uh, multiple times. They have, we have received their comments. We are, uh, we've had some feedback uh, back and forth with them multiple times. And uh, it appears we're, uh, we are ready to go. With that, uh, we'll wrap it up. I really appreciate the panelists and their time here today and the discussion. And uh, we'll be out in the foyer. Uh, and we'll be willing to take any additional questions from the audience. So thanks again. Appreciate it.